chakras. Oh, the amethyst has fallen off my meridian. Hiya, I'm Dom. And I'm Misha. And I have a chronic illness. Me too. So welcome to Anything Short of a Coffee Enema. A podcast on which we'll discuss the things we do or have done to function. And set each other challenges or tasks every time. We are prepared to go to any lengths to achieve reasonable health. Short of a macchiato, up your jacksy. Hey everyone, how are we doing? Hello, how are things? So today we are going to be going through a couple of different things. I challenged Michelle last time to do, and this is going to be incredibly inappropriate the way I say it, probably incredibly wrong, gua sha or something. Some yes. sort of Chinese torture. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what was more inappropriate, the potential mispronunciation or, <laughs> or Chinese the torture. implications of Chinese torture. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, yep, so I challenged Dom to ingest a lot of fermented things. Yes, which I had a great amount of fun with. I'm also going to be reviewing an app called Curable, which is about pain. And sticking with the app theme, I'm going to be reviewing an app called Insight Timer. So let's get into it. I challenge you to do some. I've always been fond of a massage, mm. and I challenge you to do some form of. I think it's a traditional Chinese torture device. Yes, it is. Yeah, it's called gua shua yeah. um, or gua sha, and one of those syllables I believe refers to the instrument which is used to scrape oh, on the surface scraping. of your skin, oh. and the other syllable refers to the. Um, discoloration to put it mildly <laughs> occurs as a result of that same scraping so gua sha is the traditional chinese name for it in terms of more western physio practices there are a couple of techniques that are vaguely similar ones called grastening okay and there's it does an sound ex- violent actually yeah there's an ex- it's a much better it's almost onomatopoeic grastening mm. you can hear the the tissues tearing it kind of it. also sounds like a superhero's like power as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah what yeah. does he do? I mean, he's a grastinator. Yeah, he does. He does ever so very well, but um, never, anyway. never in public. Um, <laughs> and there's a free. there's a terribly fringe therapy called um, I've completely lost it now. Rolfing, I believe. Uh, this isn't rolling on the floor laughing. No, so it's named after a person. And if it's Rolf Harris, we can all stop now. No, no. Oh, unfortunately, we have to keep on going. <laughs> um, and yeah, I don't. I'm not totally across it, but I believe there are some really weird aspects of it, like um, to do with sort of gravitation oh. and other oh. things. But but part of it is also this really sort of intense scraping. From a from a purely scientific point of view, interestingly enough, this is the one soft tissue manipulation which has been shown experimentally to make long term difference to tissue. Ah. To Do, is that because it encourages a lot of blood flow and a lot of regeneration through blood flow and whatever else? I've got else? no bleeding idea, but the one okay. the one problem with the experiments is they're done on rats. Oh. So it's done on an animal which has been one deliberately injured, and then yeah. two a giant by their standards being yeah. with a giant amount of tension and force those poor little creatures has then influenced the tissues to Rats heal are them actually really lovely yeah they are but this is like com- compared to things like doing foam rolling which feels yeah. great at the time but doesn't it doesn't have, have lasting long-term. benefits yeah. yeah exactly this theoretically might so anyway um i had been doing this on myself yeah so i challenge you to do it to mm. yourself but if you because we're not super wealthy. Let's just put that out there. Yes. But if you could at least get one session from a professional mm. who does this for a living in yep. order to compare and contrast and see whether or not you are doing some poor mockery or whether or not yeah. you can do this at home. Yeah. Well, look, the really simple answer is you can do it at home, mm. but your own psychic self-protection... <laughs> will not of, let you do it. Yeah, won't yeah, let right. you go too crazily hard. So... It's the same with... For me, self-injecting B12, I, I don't have room with needles and I don't have room with injecting other things. But for some reason, seeing that go into my leg muscle, I just, I, my, can... I go to do it and my body and my arm stops and I don't know how or why because I'm sure I didn't tell it to. I can, yeah, I can so easily believe that. I'm just um, <laughs> briefly trying to look up the place where I got it done. I think it's called, 
Um, Gua Shua R Us? No. Um, big shout out to Five Zen in Camberwell. Ah. Who took enormously good care of me. We're not being paid for this message. No one pays us anything. I think I've been there for a massage once, yeah. actually, because it's not that far away from me. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. will. I, I just want to put it out there right now. I think I can speak for Dom. We will welcome any kind of relationship with Five Zen now. <laughs> well, <laughs> Please massage me all the time. Zen Five, actually. My apologies. Um, so, yeah, they're, they're certainly welcome to come on board. And anyway... Um, we are not particularly wealthy, but this 20 minutes of being expertly scraped God, by someone... God, that's short. You don't you want sh- any more. Oh, okay. me. <laughs> 20 you minutes is the limit of Misha Endurance. <laughs> that's plenty. Absolutely plenty. Um, but 20 bucks for 20 minutes. That's pretty good. And I was effortlessly upsold to an additional 20 minutes of cupping for an extra 20 bucks. Good job, five then. Yep, great job, honestly. So 40 minutes in total, $40. That's actually not bad, Bye. Yeah, yeah. By the standards I mean, of I regularly pay hands on you. Um, a qualified masseuse, well, not regularly, but semi regularly, $90 for about about an hour of remedial massage. Yeah. And that's pretty cheap Yeah. going around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in those 40 minutes. Body work's expensive. Yeah. So in those 40 minutes, I got my quads done, I got my back done, and I got my neck done. Okay. Um, not scraping everywhere, not cupping everywhere, but a kind of combination of both. Now, I did send you an image of what my mm. back looked like directly mm. afterwards. And I think you sent it around dinner time, and I was like, thank you. Thank you for that. Because <laughs> it, it's not dinner time for everyone else, but I ate dinner at like 5.30. <laughs> and I was like, that, as, you know, I'm not particularly... I will still eat my meal. I'm just putting it away for 10 minutes mm. whilst I try not to also digest Mish's raw and bloody slab of a back. <laughs> Because if you've ever seen The Hunger Games, there's this scene in it where one of the guys gets whipped quite a few times and his, his, the back or actually happens in Outlander as well. God, it's gorgeous. Anyway, um, where his, it's one of the Hemsworths that gets whipped a lot and he's half naked and half of his back is just kind of slab of bloody meat. And I'm not saying yours is that bad. No. Well, but it was, it was heading down that path. Yeah, it yeah. was red and it was angry and it was a bit like, what have you done to me? I never crazy. deserved this, says the skin, who's probably never been exfoliated. Because how do you reach the, but you're back for exfoliation? I have no how? idea. Yeah. A long-handled brush of some sort, maybe. Well, then it's body brushing. It's not exfoliating, is it? This is true. Different. This is true. So it did, and that, that did take about a week and a half, maybe a little, just a fraction under two weeks to totally... Clear yeah, up. I have had cupping before and it does take a while to go away. Yeah. You can go some funny colours in the process of going away. Yeah. So I just, it is worth distinguishing the two. So the, the scraping is something you can actually do on yourself. And I would actually recommend that people give it a shot. If you've got... Are they gonna, so it's the best way for people to give it a shot to like YouTube it or... YouTube it if you want, but basically what you can do is grab a... Sp- Grab like a metal spoon with a blunt edge. I would Mm -hmm. recommend using some kind of massage oil. And basically, like if you've got a spot that's really tender, muscle, not tendon, probably. Mm -hmm. Um, Just a little bit of massage oil. And just basically all you're aiming to do is just work at it for a little while. And if it gets uncomfortable... Get a couple of layers of skin. Yeah, yeah. If it gets uncomfortable, just stop. Now, from what I can tell on human beings using kind of human force on it, what it's really good at is... Um, separating myofascial tissues, which is like if anyone's okay. ever cut up, say, a chicken breast and you find there's that kind of weird membrane, yeah. that's a piece of connective tissue which can apparently sometimes get a little bit kind of sticky and it adheres to muscles and causes impingement. Yeah. Fantastic, I, I truly believe, for clearing that kind of stuff up. I'm not so sure, like again, as I said earlier, from an experimental point of view, it's a human working on a rat that definitely causes long-term change to tissue composition. Yeah. I doubt very much that even human on human, when it's a, you know, Zen yeah. 5 Camberwell... Um, when you've got the... Yeah, yeah. ...music playing in the background. That's right, and when someone's really like, you know, you haven't screamed in agony yet, and they're like, oh, I can go a bit harder. I can do this more. Yeah, um... So that, I doubt, is having a long-term impact. But what I will say is, like, afterwards, my neck felt a lot looser, yeah, more kind of comfortable. It's not as if, you know, back was discoloured for quite a significant period of time, but it's not like lying on it was uncomfortable. Yeah, okay, that's important. Or anything like that. Um, it's one of these things that it was... I actually found it quite difficult to track down someone who openly advertised this service. 
Okay. I feel like maybe even by the standards of kind of complementary medicine or alternative medicine, it's a little bit out there for a lot of people. Okay. I could find one physio, uh, one chiropractor rather in Melbourne who advertised grastoning. Yep. Um, but I was frightened off by the potential for A, price, and B, that was somewhere out in Fern Tree Gully or something oh, crazy God. like that. So it wasn't going to go there. Trams don't go there. I don't go there. Yeah. Um, yeah, so... I would definitely like. I would definitely say it's something that I'm quite big on trying these things out for myself, yeah. um, if I possibly can. I find it really, really effective for like post exercise or got some niggling, nagging problem. Work on it for a couple of nights in a row, and I really feel a difference. I imagine somebody who does a lot of work at a computer or a laptop or an iPad or whatever. They, those are the kind of people that often really complain about, or they just sit there staring at the phone all day, mm. um, about the upper thoracic neck and into all those little muscles at the back of your head. Heck I yeah. reckon that sort of thing would be great for them. If you noticed a dis- difference in loosening your neck and mm. you're already a, you're not super tight in that area mm. anyway, then, I, yeah, some people may really want to get on that. Yeah. And it's, again, like if you can find, I mean, as I said, and, you know, no joking aside about, you know, potential lucrative sponsorship opportunities in the future <laughs> but honestly i was i was really impressed with price points and you know service professionalism they're really nice yep. um so if you happen to be in the area i would i would definitely give it a go but just more generally like if you're interested in this stuff try it with as i said like a dessert spoon should be a really good starting point for you get your dessert spoon and your sweet almond oil out and that's exactly talk to your right. sweetie about you know destroying some of your skin yeah, yeah and give it a go yourself and then like if you're slightly obsessive like me you can then look into there are a range of kind of specialist semi-specialist tools that you can buy online for actually not that much i don't know if you need help like encouraging you to spend money on things like that because the, the sound of your like it you often tell me how much of the stuff that for like your crossfit type stuff you bought i don't know if you need encouragement like <laughs> i try not to buy all the all the dog jumpers for my dog yeah. because it's a transference of my horse rug addiction yeah but i know it's there and i have to try hard and i think you don't need to delve into that world misha you're okay on your own you can do it's it. It's possible. One day I will actually uh, show you like the entire stash of stuff because I really do want to see your face. I imagine it's like a huge garage full. It's not quite a garage full, but it's slightly, it's potentially not, slightly embarrassing just in terms, of, <laughs> in terms of the tonnage, uh, the sheer tonnage of All right. it. Right. So gua sha. Yeah, sounds good. Bottom line, definitely I would, I would investigate it if you haven't already. I would, though, be prepared for the fact that unlike... There's, there's a difference in terms of pain in the moment between this and even, say, getting a deep tissue massage, yep. like a proper, they're just going to say, this is really going to hurt, but it's necessary that it hurts before yep. it happens. There, are, there were bits where, and I'm not former horse rider, you know, can be stomped on and just get up and keep going again, but at the same time, I'm not, you know, a total squeal out loud kind of person. But uh, there were moments when I was within a whisker of saying, hey, actually, you know what? Back off <laughs> a bit, this mate. Is, maybe <laughs> this, is, this has gone a little bit too far <laughs> at this point. So it's not, while it's happening, is it is it, not what I could call pleasant. You know how you can distinguish the good pain from the bad pain when you're like getting a massage or whatever those sort of things are? You know how you can have the, that's, that hurts, but it's such a good pain. Yeah, this you was actually, fixing it. this, was this is not a good blurry. pain. This okay. was a little bit blurry. It was like within cooey of that, but getting towards points where you start to think, especially around the neck, I think maybe I was just nervous of the fact that that, this feels really weird and it's quite close to my spinal column. Spinal cord. You know, I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't want to damage anything permanently here. Yeah, that's um, right. I do also have one other question. Did they ask you or is it important to know what your skin type is? Because like some people have quite an oily skin, some people have quite a dry skin and I imagine the intensity of scraping may depend slightly on skin type. Yeah, definitely. I've got a feeling that having just said wonderful things about their professionalism, I have a feeling this guy was kind of winging it with me. There were no questions there. It was going to be, we'll find out later on. You did say to me that that he was very surprised that you were of a non-Chinese origin and asking for this particular treatment. So maybe he's not necessarily got the right vocab to describe or to do that. Maybe, yeah. Walk through that process with somebody who doesn't speak his native language. That's quite possible. Look, what I would say is I don't have especially sensitive skin and I really did look like I'd been beaten up at the end of this. 
if you do I quite have... enjoy the fact you like being quite beaten up, especially given that I suffered boils and now you're <laughs> a bit beaten right. and I really enjoyed exactly. that just a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Look, we don't, we don't want to create the kind of health and wellness podcast where we're doing things that actually make us feel better. If anyone's got the idea that that's what we're about, this but is very this is, much this about... This is not the podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go no, to sore really bones. Not, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> downloaded a little app called Curable because it has been all over my social medias in advertising, not in people having actually used it, which always intrigues me. Um, so it's an app that's meant to help you pain. They actually advertise it as helping or cured migraine. I don't know if migraines or migraine pain or mm. I don't know, cancer, who knows. Um <laughs> So they really recommend it for people with bad backs and people with migraines. That's where they've had results. So it's a free app you download and you've got about three or four things to listen to before they're like, paywall, here, pay us lots of money, we'll cure your pain in like a week, Mm. which is a big claim. I obviously didn't pay the money because A, I'm skint and B, I don't know if I was going to get a lot out of it and I'll tell you why. So their theory in dealing with pain is kind of looking at the parasympathetic nervous system and that whole pain catastrophizing that you do where, you know, they're not trying to say, and I'm just going to get this out there because people, if they listen ever, they're going to go, oh, no, my pain is real. They're not saying your pain isn't real. What they're saying is once you've, like, moved in a way that hurts your back, the next time you move that way, your body knows that that could hurt or knows that it probably will hurt, so they prepare Mm. for it, and in the preparing for it, it kind of creates the pain Mm. in a way. It doesn't necessarily mean that that movement has caused the pain. The memory of the pain has caused the pain. Mm. Um, So they delve into it in terms of migraine sufferers in particular because there's one or two that's helped a lot with and these are people that were suffering migraines to the point where they couldn't do anything for days on end and Mm. they couldn't work anymore and lives completely obliterated. But in terms of non non-migraine and non-general kind of chronic back pain, it doesn't... I don't know if it was going to help me, basically, because Mm. I kind of get pain catastrophizing. And I'm lucky. I have a high pain threshold naturally. It's part of who I was, always have been, because I'm used to horses stomping on me, I guess. And you can't bitch about it. You just keep on going. Mm. Yeah. I, I was brought up in the area where... You know, we're all like, we all want to be like Jill Rodden. She broke her ribs and a collarbone and everything and then got back on and won the, you know, Olympic gold medal. Mm. We all wanted to be that. So pain was, not for pussies, but pain wasn't important Mm. um, because it's temporary. And yes, chronic pain isn't temporary. That's why it's chronic. But I already knew a lot about the parasympathetic nervous system. I already knew that the way that you, the self-talk in your brain, you know, so if I have a dose of vertigo... I know I'm going to get really sore, locked up around my upper neck, neck, shoulders, all that sort of stuff. So I don't talk about it to myself. I'm mm. not allowed to. It's a mm. blanket rule on, oh, it could hurt. No, you know, it kind of will hurt. But you also know you know how to make it better within a couple of days. You know you've got your physio appointment next week. You know that it's livable and it's fine and you can do things to minimise the pain up until then. Mm. And because I'm very active on my self-talk, which is one of the things I talk about, they also talk about meditation. I meditate often, so I'm kind of on top of that anyway. They also have this other thing that they talk about, which I think is behind the paywall because I never saw it, which is writing. Like, I think it's like unconscious writing or something where you're just blurbing out everything. Mm. But I think what that's really meant to do is tell you what's in, what it is that your self-talk is doing if you haven't already clicked into it. Mm. Um so I, I didn't do I didn't practice any of things those things because Curable told me to. I was already kind of practicing them, so that's why I didn't do the paywall. Go behind me. I just didn't think I needed it. Mm. Um, I think if you haven't got access to a decent psych and you haven't got access to being able to go, I'm in pain. I think I'm going to be in a lot of pain for the next few days, and I don't know how I'm going to cope. So what's behind the paywall is you can go, oh, God, I'm in pain, and somebody's there to say, hey, let's talk about you, let's talk about your pain, let's, you know, and they basically talk you down from the place of catastrophizing. Mm. 
So I kind of get why for a lot of people curable would really work because there's someone there to go to just start to reframe that conversation you have with yourself. Mm. Whether you'd need it ongoing for a very long time, I think depends on how quick of a learner you are. Yeah. Yeah. So what is like paywall, what sort of costs are involved? Um, it Look, it depends. You can pay by the month, you can pay by the week, you can pay by the, I think it's like somewhere Canadian, it was like 18 bucks a month Canadian or something, mm-hmm. but then they offer you deals if you don't sign up immediately and all that sort of shit. So it's not massively expensive, especially if you're only going to do a couple of months, maybe mm-hmm. that's super helpful. And especially if you're not got the sort of 150 160 $200 price bracket you need to see a psych. Mm. But that's just for one session. Yeah. And most psychs, they'll actually sit you down and just talk about you for a session before you actually start to talk about the stuff you need to talk about. At least a session. At least yeah. a session. So, you know, if you don't have that hundreds of dollars commitment to getting through it with a psych, um, mm. and it hasn't actually come up necessarily with my psych because I think I'm – we've talked about catastrophizing in other terms but not in pain because – I'm lucky in that most of the time with pain, I can push it to the back and I go, yeah, it's there. You know, mm. to some degree, I think once you hit a certain age, you're probably always in a little bit of pain because I broke off my body when I was younger because I can just kept getting on horses I probably shouldn't have got on or whatever. So this sounds like, um, <laughs> it sounds like this app is almost like Smiley Mind, which we talked about a number of episodes ago. Yes. Um, is like well below your own self-care capabilities for want of something else like this is a little bit beginner level for you um no i think it's probably just that maybe my pain isn't acute enough to make me catastrophize i think Mm -hmm. if i'm in acute enough so i've spoken about previously when last year in 2017 i had a massive infection going on and um when i saw the doctor because i couldn't like I was vomiting everything I couldn't keep water down and I couldn't sit up striped but I couldn't bend over either and Mm. you know I was in a lot of pain because every time I breathed it hurt so I couldn't meditate through the pain Mm. that fucking sucked balls um and when I saw I couldn't see my GP I saw a different GP and she's like oh you know you've got a sore back sometimes so you're probably taking anti-inflammatory so it's probably just that and I was like I why I was just too unwell to be an advocate for myself, mm. I think. And I was like, I kind of wanted it to be that as well. Yeah. There's an element of that. And so when I did go back to my doctor and he was like, oh, no, you've got this massive infection and other stuff. So he's like four lots of drugs for the next month. Yeah. Um, during that time, I wasn't able to sleep because I was in too much pain because every time I moved, it woke me up. I couldn't breathe properly, all that sort of stuff. And then I think I did do a bit of catastrophizing. Yeah. But I wasn't catastrophizing about the pain. I was more catastrophizing about the CFS and about ha- whether or not that was going to be a new normal. But I think if the pain is acute enough, you will catastrophize. Mm. Um, and all I did was reach out to my support network and go, oh, I'm not okay. And my support network's pretty great and they were able to help me through it. And this is friends and family more than medical support. Yeah. So I think if you're somebody that is having serious acute pain, that could probably really help this app. I'm lucky my chronic pain, it's there, but it's not massively acute most of the time. And if it is, I know generally, if it's not something else informing it, I can control it by certain means from experience with, you know, Mm. life. Um, Yeah, I think it has its place. It's just maybe not for me. You know, something like a migraine, it's like vertigo, I guess, in that you can't function, but there's a lot more pain and vomiting and all sorts of other neurological things going on. So maybe for something like that, it is there or someone. There's also that thing that babies or children, you see it in toddlers when they fall over, that the greatest pain in the world to them is the pain that they're currently in. Mm. And I think some people don't grow up and realise that's not actually true. Mm. And for those people, that the greatest pain that there could be to them is the pain that they're currently in, those people would benefit greatly Mm. from something like curable. Yeah. Thing. I am. Yes. So I'm. I'm sticking with your highly technological review 
standard that you've set today. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm going to review a meditation app called Insight Timer. Mm-hmm. Insight so, Timer is... The one with the, the singing bowl picture. It is the one with the singing bowl picture, absolutely. It's kind of like it strikes me as being a sort of YouTube for meditation providers, more or less, or it strikes me that way anyway, because loads okay. and loads of people just seem to upload their oh, meditation programs. I thought it was a bit like a poor man's smiling mind, but you're saying that no. there's like you can choose, you know, if you've had a great meditation from Paul... You can go back and choose other meditations from him. Absolutely. So there are two things about that. One, the range of stuff on there is absolutely amazing. That's the good thing about it. The bad thing about it is there does not appear to be anything even vaguely along the lines of quality control. We don't don't appear at at this podcast we don't approve of quality control. No. And so this app is certainly don't you know practice it. For me personally, on the upper end, there's a woman called Sharon Salzberg who I think anyone who's even vaguely interested in mindfulness should look up. She's a wizard. Okay. I think anyway. She Good has name. she has a wonderful Bostonian, you know, um, New England accent, yep. which I personally find I, I quite like that right accent, up my alley. Yeah. Um, she's one of these wonderful there seems to be there was a generation of nice East Coast American Jewish people who went all Eastern in what? the 60s and 70s. Just one? Okay, yep. No, 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 there are loads of them. Um, Sharon Salzberg, Joseph Goldstein is another, like, amazing meditation resource. Okay. And, yeah, so these, you know, these people who, you know, down one path of their life could have been secular rabbis went instead down the kind of... Kind of opposite. Eastern path, opposite, yeah. Opposite, like... Religion but, direction. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, her her meditations are just fantastic. There's n- nothing kind of woo woo about them. They're incredibly useful and basic and calming. She says this wonderful thing at the start of a lot of meditations, which I think is really important. She just reminds you, you don't need to sit there thinking you're about to do anything weird. <laughs> right? Which is, that is really nice. That is important, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's really nice because you you can sometimes get the feeling like I'm being a real twit here. Like I'm, yeah, you know, I'm sitting down about to do something relatively Especially for the kind of meditations that are like imagine yourself in a specific place and, you know, they get the imagination going and they, you know, they bring you to your own safe space, so to speak. Yeah, you can feel a bit like you've tried to go like dream wandering or Mm. something. Yeah. Yeah. So on the on the good end, there are people like her. Tara Branch is another one I really recommend. She's a little bit soppy in terms of some of the kind of life stories and life messages that she tells. It's not entirely to my taste, but her guided meditations are really really good. Those are on the on the really good end. On the entirely other end, there are people who are into or believe in solfeggio frequencies, for example, I which do is not this know what that is. total bullshit that there's this original form of a scale solfeggio so far la as in sound of music yes. do a dear stuff yes but they're supposed to be these sacred and healing frequencies it's complete like it's total it's total bollocks on so many different ways but one of the most hilarious things about it that i particularly love is that it's only in the late 1800s that the current um, hertz levels for particular notes were actually settled on. So people who believe in solfeggio frequencies will sometimes try and tell you this is like ancient mystical magic. <laughs> but in fact, the actual frequencies they're using in the modern world are quite distinct from those. That Did were. you ever read about this guy called, I think it's from Franz Anton Mesmer? And no. he brought about this thing in the uh, France in like, I think it was the early 1800s maybe, um, called mesmerizing. That's where the word mesmerizing yeah. comes from. Because he would like get like a piece of string and like attach it to a exceedingly wealthy pe- person of the French nobility, and then put it to a tree and be like, "You're tapping into the, you oh, know, God. the vibrations from the tree." And he was a total charlatan, and yeah. everyone bought into it for so long. That's what that just reminded me of. Absolutely, and I will be. Um, I'll be posting on our Instagram some of the stuff that I found on on. Um, on Insight Timer because some of it's just beyond like DNA resequencing frequencies. Like f- it's full on out there bullshit. Anyway. But delve uh, into it if you want, if only to know that you don't want to delve into it anymore. Absolutely. 
the basic version of Insight Timer is free. Uh, for the free version, you can only stream stuff, so you do need to be in an area where okay. you've got reliable Wi-Fi or tons of data on your phone plan. Mm-hmm. Um, that being said, for relatively small amounts of money, you can download and replay anywhere your favourite Yes, ones. once it's on your phone, you yep. can keep it on your phone. Once yeah. it's actually on your phone. I now basically use three or four things on it. Insight Timer, as the name suggests, is just you can set a timer for a particular period of time yep. to meditate. So I do my five to ten minutes, depending on how I'm feeling, every night just with that. Um, I happen to have it set so there's kind of a sound of light rain in the background. There's a nice, little nice. nice little sounds like a sort of uh, singing bowl. I love that sound. In the background from time to time. That's great. And the other thing I use it for heaps is to go to sleep. There are people who've like recorded a thunderstorm. Ah, for example. Yeah, yeah, um, okay. There's a guy who's recorded a thunderstorm and also the sound of um, the surf on a shingle beach. Yeah. Which is just, oh, I love it anyway. Um, just makes me need to pee. <laughs> Where rain does not, go figure. No right. sense. Well, there you go. Um, and this, the shingle beach one I also like because there are seals barking from time to time. Ah. For some reason I find that quite soothing. So I use that heaps and heaps. Um, yeah, there's definitely on the on the outside of things. There's some other things that I can't make up my mind about. So, for example, um, binaural beats. This is another one. Like, here's the actual thing with binaural beats. If anyone has had anything to do with music and actually tuning up an instrument, you will know that when you get one note very close to another note, you'll hear this kind of um, beat in the background. There's a kind mm-hmm. of frequency that you can hear. That's literally all that a binaural beat is two notes that are very very close in tuning but it creates the they sometimes call it an um auditory illusion like it's the same thing as kind of a um mule liar yeah. line it's fooling your eye this kind of fools your ear it's it's a like but not quite a like and there's this they use it often on um lo-fi hip-hop and yeah, stuff as well that's yeah. right so the claim behind this is that it gets your brain into the meditating frequency, that sounds extremely implausible to me. Also, I don't think I need to have a certain frequency to meditate. No. I think the point of meditation sometimes is that you're at different frequencies. Your Mm. brain is at different points of how much it's doing or not doing. Yeah, and quite possibly even the word frequency is a terrible misnomer when applied to anything that your brain actually does. Maybe. It's a nice word, though. Yeah, so those kind of things, I mean, I'm I'm not certain about. But even there, like some of them, there are people who just post these things where they're kind of, it's kind of like soothing music, but it's got this quality that there's this kind of, again, kind of beat behind it. Yeah. that may or may not be your thing. There are some pretty wild claims on there, as I said, the DNA recalibrating ones. And Which sounds like I need to get on there and do that because it yeah. sounds hilarious. Um, so you've just done the free one. You haven't done the part in the back behind the paywall? Yeah, and again, behind the paywall is just your ability to download stuff and keep it on your phone. That's the only thing that gets you. How much is the paywall? No idea. Okay. I'm Fair. Full, of, full of information. <laughs> but- <laughs> Look, it's late on a weekend. He's got a child. Yeah, here's a but here's people here's, get tired. Yeah, here's here's what I would also say about the paywall stuff. It's like for most for most people most of the time, like if you're using this, it's really unlikely that you're gonna be in the middle of the Simpson Desert. That is while true. you're doing so, chances are you're gonna be somewhere comfortable like your home. You could be in the Pilbara. People have do I'm sure people have meditated in the Pilbara before. Yeah, probably. But, I mean, find some other way to do it, I guess, is what I'm telling you under those circumstances. Just do it the old-fashioned way. Yeah, okay. Um, Just connect your own brain frequency to whatever frequency you want to connect it to. That's exactly right. Yeah, right, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Precisely. Find someone with a didgeridoo. That'll give you... No cultural (laughs) appropriation there at all. No. Well, not if it's an actual Indigenous person who's playing it. Ah, ah, just because I said Nora (laughs) does not mean they are 100% Indigenous just because they're in that area. Anyway. That's a really fair call. I don't think there's actually a way to dig up out of this. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just assume that was incredible. So is that is Insight Timer any better than Smiling Mind or is it just because it's like you're shopping for certain services? Um, Do you find you go back to your favourite meditations in one more than the other? 
Yeah, so very different. Basically because when I got Smiling Mind, I had no idea what I was doing in this area. Mm -hmm. I had heard people talking about mindfulness on podcasts. I had even heard people like Sharon Salzberg, Joseph Goldstein, going into incredible esoteric depth about the experiences one can have when on, I don't know, a five-year silent retreat somewhere in Tibet. Um, and I mean that in the most respectful possible way. To, to <laughs> he also did lamas, that in it, you know, when he said that he did that with his arms open and he kind of nodded in his head as, well, as right. well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. nothing wrong there. I embrace all of you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, so I just felt like I needed some specific guidance. Now, what Smiling Mind offers is like a course. It's kind yeah, of a crash it's a course house. in yeah meditation, um, insight timer. Not so much. Presumably, if you really searched, you can find you beginners' find meditations okay. and you could get your way through it that way. Um, but as I said, I really like it just because of the vast, crazy variety of stuff that's on there. Yeah. And sometimes I just search through quite literally looking for the most outrageous claim in a wow. description just for the fun of it. Sometimes you've got to spare five minutes. That's a fun thing to do. Yeah, which is, a, which is definitely good for a giggle. Your, your challenge was to ingest various fermented things. So what I took that as is I have to have something that's been fermented every day. I didn't have to have like a whole bowl of kimchi every day. I can't eat kimchi. I can't really do chili. My guts don't appreciate it. Mm. If you're going to have a Skittle, definitely have the green one. Dom's, um, Dom's talking to the cat. Yes, sorry. Because And that actually segues really nicely because what I do sometimes to help me get through to drip feed a bit of energy when I'm feeling like I can't brain foggy, you know, can't bring stuff to the front, Mm. like exactly that sentence. That wasn't a sentence. Um, I drip feed either caffeine or sugar that's a very quick hit sugar because I know that it's going to drop away, Mm. but I need that little quick hit and I can keep putting in those little hits, especially for like work. So over summer, I worked my little touche off when I probably shouldn't have been doing as much work as I was doing and relied really heavily, like, unhealthily heavily on sugar and caffeine to get through and was even craving it a lot on days that I wasn't working because I was so like yeah so not where I needed to be Mm. um and that is actually kind of what fermented foods there to help you with basically Mm. so what fermented foods and we're including like kombucha in that as well fermented foods anything is fermenty um what they kind of do is you've got various – you've got your microbiome. I don't know why I said that in a Brighton voice, but I'm going to continue doing that, um, which is a very fashionable word at the moment, which just talks about your bacteria. Mm, gut flora. Well, you have a microbiome in a lot of different places. Mm. You have one on your skin as well. But, yes, your gut flora. And – not the purple. And the um, – what happens is when you're ingesting a lot of the sugar – and all that sort of shit is that it feeds the wrong bacteria or even just too much white car or too much of anything. You're trying to keep a balance. So when I was overfeeding all these bloody sugars with all this bloody sugar, all these bad bacteria in my gut, you know, it probably did. It just enhances certain symptoms in terms of you're not absorbing your food as well. You're not probably as hydrated as you'd might like to be like mm. to be. And certainly I have a lot of gastrointestinal symptoms and it was probably encouraging those. So this came at a good time for me, the fermented mm. one. And I think it certainly helped a bit. I, so I went hard on miso, kombucha. I went delved into kefir. I don't think I'm going to continue to delve into kefir. I really love yogurt. I question whether or not yogurt is fermented because most yogurts that you get a natural yogurt from the supermarket – Unless it's a pot set one like your yeah. Yalma, it tends to be they add in the bacteria at the end yeah. rather than ferment it. So yeah. I don't count it as fermented and I eat a ton of it anyway. By the way, Yalna, just like Five Zen and Campwell, don't hesitate to get in contact at any point. <laughs> we'll be yeah. very, very happy to hear from you. So I was also making sure that what I was choosing didn't have a high amount of sugar in it. So when I was choosing a lot of kombucha, and I have had kombucha in the past, I actually really enjoy it as a type of drink to have when you're at a barbecue and everybody else is drinking beer and alcohol you're drinking a kombucha it kind of looks a little bit alcoholic and it is a very 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 tiny bit of alcohol in there yes but it is it's a nice complex flavor i love tea so it still still has Mm. that tea flavor but it has that um not quite fermented but like 
slight bitter taste mm. to it, which I really enjoy. It doesn't taste too fermented in my experience. And a lot of people that I spoke to, I was like, okay, so, you know, what are the good kombuchas to people that are, you know, my kombucha gurus, I guess? And they're like, oh, I make my own. And I'm like, well, I'm not, I'm not, that seems a very common path to go down now. I'm yeah. not, I'm not going down that path. Yeah. I'm responsible enough to have animals. I'm not going to take care of, well, I can't really take care of plants. So I would, I would translate that to a kombucha alien. And it's a weird, like. it is, yeah, it's a strange mushroom-like creature. It's yeah, not. I love mushrooms. I probably just eat it. Mm. Yeah. So I went for the original or the ginger. I tried not to go for the two heavily flavoured and more fashionable brands of kombucha because mm. some of the kombucha, they do the same thing as they do with the Hibiscus yogurt. Hibiscus flower. And... Raspberry lemonade. Mm. Um, some of the kombucha, they do the same thing. They make a generic kombucha and then they put in extra bacteria or whatever yeah. later on. So it's probably not giving you the full benefit because um, in that fermenting process, good shit happens. That's about as scientific as I can get on fermentation, mm. to be honest. I don't... I'm not a food scientist. I don't delve into the actual fermenting process and yeah. why it's particularly good. I just know that it creates certain bacteria that is good. We made it very, I've made it extremely clear in the description of this podcast that no one is to expect actual or, science or indeed demand. <laughs> Although I did way. look up quite a lot of studies and then because it's a microbiome is fashionable, there are mm. studies going on. Um, none of them are like you should have this much fermented stuff every day or no. any of that. There's no prescribed amount you're meant to have. I do think, though, that having 500 ml of kombucha is probably in one day a bit much for most people. That's I, think that's, I think that's probably two doses. I think you only yeah. really need one dose, and yeah. that's about 250 ml, I would think. Yeah. Um, so what I would often do is have half a kombucha and put it back in the fridge. Um, but what I also found is... Now, I've had miso before. I often have it with my dinner. I'll put some miso paste in something, especially like stir fries. Mm. It makes it much more complex and interesting. I really like miso. But there's this freeze-dried miso that you can get, which is like a cup of soup, but mm. miso from like most of the supermarkets. Yeah. And I got that to have on hand for, you know, lunches at work if I hadn't had anything else fermented. I'm not really sure it comes up to fermented because it's freeze dry. Does that get rid of the bacteria? I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, that's a question. If you have answers, please let us know. Mm -hmm. um, and there was one morning that I woke up and I'd worked a lot the day before and it had been unseasonably hot again. And I was pretty dead. And I, in fact, texted my boss and said, I'm actually not going to be able to make it to my next shift. Like, it's two days away. And I can tell you right now yeah. that... I'll get out of bed today and I'm going to give myself massive props for getting out of bed today. So a couple of hours later, I did what I normally do, took the things I normally take, which includes electrolytes, magnesium supplements, um, CO2-10, Biotrust, which is a general B supplement. I even gave myself a B12 injection and stuff like that. And I was still feeling pretty ratchet. I was better than I was when I woke up, mm. but I was still feeling pretty ratchet. It was not a day I was going to be able to shower. Let's put it like that. And I was like, oh, I haven't had anything fermented. Fuck. And I was like, I don't have any kombucha left because that was my standby. I'll just have kombucha because I quite like it. Mm. And I do drink tea by the gallon loads anyway. My cat's destroying me back. Mm. Um, and so I had this packet miso and I made one packet, probably about 250 mil. And I had to fight the cat off because he really wanted to eat it. Yeah. So I ate it whilst, you know, dodging the cat, trying to jump in from a great height onto it. And... Within that 10 minutes, I felt noticeably 7%, 5 to 10%, around 7% better wow. than I had before the miso with all my normal stuff that I'd done. And since then, I've often had miso, that same packet miso, the freeze-dried, probably not real miso, I don't know, yeah. whatever. Maybe it's just a combination of a little bit of protein, the seaweed, hydration, and a bit of salt, salt. Yeah. even though I'd had electrolytes. Um, yeah. But I have it for breakfast now all the freaking time. Yeah. Loving it. So I don't know if that's just my body because mm -hmm. that's what my body needed at the time. I mean, but yeah, there were a lot of things that I was like, yeah, I enjoyed this. I enjoyed that. Kefir is fine if you put it in a smoothie. Just don't put too much because holy shit, that stuff can be quite... I like tangy food. Yeah. But that... But it's really full on, isn't it? It is quite full on. You need yeah. to kind of cut it, especially if you're not having a sugary version. You can get like blueberry versions and stuff. And I didn't do that because I was trying to avoid sugar in that yeah. sort of way. And... 
That is, that shit got sour. Yogurt with attitude. Yeah. yeah. And I love yogurt. I eat plain yogurt like every day. So I was just cutting it with my plain yogurt basically. Yeah. Also, it we creeps me out. We to to say Chobani if you're listening. <laughs> Kefir, do not get in touch. Um, you have to shake the kefir as well. And I'm like, I'm not down the shaking a sour milk. I just feel like, like I know that's how you get the right floaties. But yeah. I don't want to be reminded sometimes in my yogurt that there's floaties, especially not in the morning first thing. I just, mm. for some reason, I don't know, maybe I need to balls up a bit with that. But I just I couldn't quite stomach it. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed my foray into fermented stuff. I probably will continue on really enjoying the kombucha yeah i've gotten into more less the, all those less sweet ones the less you know passion fruit and all those sort of ones i used to have those sort of ones every now and again and i've gotten really into all these like deeper ones which is much more enjoyable actually they taste a lot better to me now they didn't before but what i will say is that if you're gonna expect a really hard night out on the terps and then having had fish and chips or something or and then hit yourself with lots of sugar and you're like, oh, I feel really shit and I've got the runs. Hitting one kombucha, not going to fix that. No. This is about balance. Definitely. And the whole fermented thing is about trying to keep the right balance. You don't want to go too hard on fermented. You don't want to go too hard on sugar and all yeah. that sort of shit as well. It's about yeah. balance. Yeah. And this is like to throw in my own personal obsession. It's a tricky one for people with an addiction background. Because, because there's a little bit of alcohol yeah, in it. Probably everything is fermented. Tiny, right? tiny, tiny little bit of alcohol in it. Now, this is again, this is like really quite controversial. There are people out there who, um, especially if alcohol was their primary substance that was problematic, they won't, for example, eat soy sauce, which is seven or so percent. Like it's actually ridiculously high considering what it is. It's also like means that you can't get Uber Eats from pretty much anywhere. Mm. Because everything has soy sauce in it. Yeah. 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 So if you're, if you're really obsessive about that... Wait, my, does Tamari have alcohol in it? I don't even know, to be honest. I'm not sure. Because I have Tamari because it's got no wheat in it. Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah. I haven't read the bottle of that sort of section. I just looked for the wheat bit. Yeah. But if you're, like, if you're down that route and you really are that panicked about it, it's probably something just, just not for you. Mm. My, my personal take is that those substances are problematic only in so far as there's a measurable effect on you as in if you feel some change in mood or mind state that's when things become problematic because that tends to be my take on it anyway is that tends to be the thing that people with addiction issues chase yeah to the detriment of the rest of their lives so i, I don't know yeah i think because there's small amounts unless you're overdosing on kombucha and drinking a couple of liters a day drink so much i don't know if you're going to get that effect but you, you know if you're the one that's had addiction possible. problems you're the one that should be deciding what goes into your body and definitely it doesn't matter what your reasoning is as long as you're comfortable with it yeah definitely and you know for those people like i find it very difficult to believe you could eat enough sauerkraut even if yeah i didn't do sauerkraut yeah. I, I don't approve of sauerkraut <laughs> i quite like sauerkraut anyway so that's just a little warning um i do i do have an anecdote like um it is because it is a health substance it does come up um yeah. as something that people who are recovering from addiction might want to actually have a think about i do know that um, at a rehab I've worked at previously, there was a client who did actually drink kombucha and just for fun, we breathalyzed him just to see. Yeah. And it does, it will actually show up on a sort of police level sensitive. So like one standard kombucha, which is, I'm going to say 300 mil, that's just, that's plucked from it was literally like the air. 0. 0.0002 Okay. Two but it will something. show up. It will show up. Interesting. So yeah, P platers out there, other license restrictions. Stay off the kombucha, stay man. Stay away from it, man. And don't go for sushi and have lots of soy sauce beforehand either, presumably. Also, because those little fishy packets destroy the environment. They do, but they're yeah. cute. I mean, that is like, <laughs> undeniable. <laughs> so there, that solves that problem for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I am challenging you because it's also something I have to do and I like inflicting pain I suppose I'm challenging you to go to your chemist get some hydrocobalamin hydroxocobalamin I can't say it it's the injectable form of B12 and yep. I want you to do an injection about twice a week and tell awesome. me what you feel if you like it mm -hmm. now just to let everyone know it is 
it is over the counter. You can buy it. You have to ask your chemist for it. Um, and it's not necessarily dangerous in that you, if you've got too much of your body and it doesn't want to use it, you'll just pee it out. So you yep. might just have it's slightly Extremely more expensive. Fluorescent. It's not particularly expensive, but you yep. might have slightly more expensive pee for a couple of days. But the reason I'm challenging you to do this, not just because I have to do it and therefore I will inflict it upon you, mm. is also because it's a bit fashionable in Hollywood that if you've got a big premiere that you want to look super bright and happy for, that you get a good injection or an IV infusion of B12 beforehand. Wow. Because it's meant to make you feel a lot more awake and alert and basically, I think, turn you into a superhuman person. Fabulous. Yeah, like so you can do that. superhuman person. That sounds fabulous. You and may I... need to get your GP to do it. If you're not comfortable injecting yourself, it is intramuscular. Just to any, if anyone was playing along at home, just clarifying that. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> I'm going I'm to try really hard to go the, um, the do-it-myself. Right? Now, I know that you've had experience in the... Um, rehab world are you experienced with the injecting world are you good at self-injecting stuff <laughs> i'm not this this will be absolutely okay. a first um i was a common or garden extremely boring alcoholic all right and was not um was never not into delved into areas you shouldn't delve world. no they will offer you alcohol swabs yeah also you know you're an alcoholic don't take the alcohol swabs <laughs> but also it hurts more injections hurt more if you alcohol swab you'll yeah. be fine just put up with the infection instead is what you're saying. You won't get any infection if it's a sterile needle, you pansy. <laughs> All right. What, what, what am I doing? That's very fair. So um, I was tempted to inflict upon you doing a gratitude list, but instead um, I'll try and inflict upon you instead. Dear diary. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. That's, it's a little bit lame doing that, and it's also, I think, a little bit kind of fake. So here's a more practical suggestion. What I want you to do is every night ask yourself three questions. The questions are... Who did I help today? Second question is, who helped me? And the third mm -hmm. question is, what did I learn okay. today? The idea of this is it should theoretically do two things. It should remind you of stuff that's good in your life, which is good for one's mental health. Always nice. And the second thing is you can use it as a kind of diagnostic measure, which is to say that if you're consistently finding it difficult to come up with certain things, yep. certain areas, it's a good kind of suggestion for kind of practical things that you might change in your life in order to have something to put in that area yeah 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 cool i can do that great sounds fun now what we also wanted to do was just do some updates because we've done quite a few challenges at this point mm. and we wanted just to make sure in case any of our opinions had changed to you know keeping with our scientific styles yep. keep up and tell you if they had changed why etc mm. so misha have any of your opinions of any of your challenges changed they haven't, no, I kept trying to do ASMR for such a long time, <laughs> for such a Why long time. Why does it not work for me? I know, after it was clearly, and I've been through every for Tingle Virgins video on you, that YouTube has to offer, then I became darkly fascinated by just all the different scenarios. Yeah, like okay. Like ASMR, which is supposed to be about soothing you, there's some really dark shit out there, like post-apocalyptic role plays. How's There's that a not whole... soothing? Somebody's taking care of you when the world's gone to pot. That's so soothing. No, it isn't. Because the, totally first, the first thing that you're supposed to imagine is that there's been... There's a, like, check-up post-nuclear fallout one, for I... fuck's sake. What's soothing about that? Again... There are still people that will help you when the world has gone to pot. I really don't understand. There's a HP Lovecraft themed one, like people in weird undersea creature masks. Nice, nice. Uh, it's just I wonder if there's an HR so Puff and Stuff one, because strange. I always found HR Puff and Stuff a little bit terrifying oh, as a child. There probably is one and ASMR then I, song. Then I discovered there, more and more of the Eastern European channels, which it's not ASMR, it's just cleavage. <laughs> that is 100% accurate. It really <laughs> is. It's just incredibly soft porn. It's not, it's not pleasant. Did you ever, I mean, you probably didn't, there's this channel called in brackets fee and then male not in brackets ASMR no. where it's a man and a woman and they're both silent and they don't ever speak but they're doing things whatever it is that they're doing painting a portrait of you or whatever yeah. there's this one where she's giving him a haircut and he's got a wig on and she cuts it all straight around like a bowl cut but it is he looks so uncomfortable the entire time that I, I couldn't look away it was so enjoyable not at all relaxing really oh that's the sounds are relaxing, but I couldn't relax to it because I was just like, he looks so uncomfortable. He's just staring at the camera Some with his wig are. getting a bowl cut. <laughs> it's just so weird. There's one where a guy seems to just spend a lot of time sort of patting and jiggling his partner's bottom. 
which again is just I'm it's fine probably don't put it on video but it's great incredible soft porn <laughs> incredibly soft porn category so that's a bust for me I'm afraid I'm just I can't I can't keep on doing it not even for the for the humorous area for the joy just, factor I don't appear to be one of those people who are susceptible to the vast majority of what's out there yeah okay fair wise. enough fair enough we're all so, different. We're all different. It's a shame. Um, after my last um, foray into natural deodorants... Which resulted in... Boils! Biblical plagues. Um, Misha suggested, I think, off-air. It's hard to remember on-air, off-air. It's all the same. Mm. Um, that he had seen a natural cruelty-free deodorant in, I think, Woolies for not very expensive. It's a roll-on. It's in a green thing. I think it's called Green Crystal. So he dropped that by my place one day when I wasn't home, and I have been using it. I've also decluttered the La Vanilla one that that gave me boils. That's gone to my mum, who loves it, is completely boil-free and totally fine, wears it before she plays tennis and stuff, loves it. Um, The... The Schmitz I haven't yet got rid of because I just paid too much money. I'm going to throw it out. I just yeah. It's going to sit there for a bit longer before yeah, I throw yeah, it yeah. out. One of those moments. Um, the crystal one that you gave me, it's good. It's very unisex smelling. By that, yeah. I mean it smells like man's, um, which is fine. It's just not how I it's generally my, it's like It's my to daily smell. go-to. Well, there you go. I now disclosure. smell like Misha. Aren't we all happy? Yeah. Except I lay a perfume over it, obviously. Um... I probably I can use it for a good probably six days in a row, no problem, no skin reaction. Yeah. However, I probably couldn't use it for many more days than that without a very mild skin reaction. Yeah, so right. I don't know what it is in natural deodorants, but they do not agree with my skin. I'm going to keep using it. I'm going to use it all up yeah. because I can use it every two or three days and it's fine and I don't get a reaction that way. Yeah. But, yeah, I did go and use it for, I think, eight or nine days and then got a bit of a reaction. Yeah, right. So my body just says, give me the aluminium. Give me all the aluminium you've got. Yeah, that's really yeah. interesting. Although I'm happy that <clears throat> it's cruelty-free. That makes my soul feel better. Yeah. I, like, I, I guess I should say, just as a kind of, if you're thinking about getting into this particular one, um, it's not... Like, if you've got a physical job in summer, it's probably not a kind of go-to Yeah, look, it's going to serve me really well on days when I'm at home or doing groceries or something. It's probably not going to... It's not the one that I reach for when I'm going to work. Yeah. Where I work a relatively physical job, I'm around animals all day and stuff, and while the animals don't mind my smelling, the workmates do. And it's not something I've felt confident taking to work regularly, wearing to work regularly. Yeah. 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 But we're all different. I don't think I've got any other updates, really. I think that's about it for me. Mm. Thank you, dear listener, for, well, for for listening. A few words in these litigious times before I tell you how you can get in touch. Anything short of a coffee enema is not intended to be and should not be used as a substitute for advice from medical and psychological professionals. If you want to get in touch with us, and we would love to hear from you, you can email us at anythingshortpod at gmail.com. We gratefully accept suggestions for future challenges and books and other products to review. Or you can heap upon us criticism and abuse. If you wish to heap abuse but find yourself short on time, we recommend Twitter and Instagram, where we go by at shortofapod. If you like what you've heard, on the other hand, leave us a rating and a review on iTunes. Tweet about us, or, like the common cold or herpes simplex, spread us by using your mouth. 